Hi, I'm Chad with Move for Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Guitar Chords for Beginners. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a D at 11 slash F sharp chord. Here's an open D at 11 slash F sharp chord. And this chord is really useful if you play like a G. You could go to a D at 11 slash F sharp, to an E minor 7, to a C at 9. And you can leave your third and fourth finger there the whole time using this chord. So it's a really useful chord and it's really useful for beginners to learn because you can leave your two fingers there and it can really give you some easier transitions to do and get really nice sounds out of it. Now this has a bigger name, but it's really not that hard of a chord to play, so it's still a beginner chord even though it has a longer name. And the slash part where it says slash F sharp, a slash chord just means that the lowest note in the chord is a note other than the root. So a D chord has a D as the lowest note, that's the root note. But when you put a note lower than that in the chord, for instance, in this chord, I'm using an F sharp on my sixth string. So that's the lowest note in this chord, the lowest note that I'm playing. Now that's the lowest note, so it's called a slash F sharp chord. It does, you don't really need to understand that. That just, if you're curious about what a slash chord is, why it says slash F sharp, or you'll come across chords like C slash G or G slash B or just a bunch of different combinations. That's all it means is that a note other than the root is the lowest note that you're playing in the chord. So the fingering for this chord, you're gonna take your first finger and place it on the sixth string, second fret. Then you're gonna take your second finger and drop it down towards the floor to the third string, second fret. And then your third finger is gonna go down towards the floor to the second string, third fret. And your fourth finger is going to go right under that towards the floor to the first string third fret. And you're fretting those notes and the other thing you have to do is you have to actually block out this fifth string with your first finger. Because this fifth string, if you leave it in, the chord becomes pretty muddy. So you want to try and block that out and just mute it so that the chord's not as muddy. And the way you do that is you lay your first finger down a little flatter than normal just so that this part of your finger is lightly touching the fifth string and keeping it muted. So it should sound like that. So when I have my first finger on the sixth string, I just let it go gently over the top of the fifth string and mute that string out. And that's what it should sound like. If you're not doing it, it's going to sound like that. If you're accidentally pushing too hard, you'll get that noise. So just lightly touch it to keep that string from ringing out. And then that string's muted out, and the next string down towards the floor, which is the four string, you leave open. And open strings are when you're not fretting a note on that string, but you just let that string ring out. And with any chord you play, any note that you fret on the guitar, you want to try and get as close to the front fret wire as possible in whatever fret you're in. So right here is the second fret between these two fret wires. I want to get as close as possible to this front fret wire as I can. So when I'm fretting the note, I want my fingers to be up close to the fret wire in whatever fret I'm in without being on top of it. And the reason you want to do that is because it takes a lot less pressure to get the note to ring out clearly. If I'm back in the fret, I'll start getting buzzing, so I'll have to push a lot harder to stop that from happening, and it's not going to sound as good, and then I'm going to be putting more pressure with my hand, and it's just not a good way to play it. You can risk hurting your hand, and it's not going to sound very good. But it's not always possible with every single note that you play in chords, because you have certain fingers that will block other fingers. So, for example, these two fingers in this chord can get close to this fret wire without any problem. Your fourth finger can get close to this fret wire without any problem. But your third finger can't get very close because your fourth finger is in the way. So your third finger is just going to touch your fourth finger like mine is. And 
that places it back farther in the fret, but that's all right. You don't want to like stack them on top of each other or anything, try and get close to this fret wire. It's just going to have to be where it is, and you might have to put a little bit more pressure with that finger. But with any finger that's able to, you want to get as close to the front fret wire as possible. And make sure with this cord that your fourth, third, and second finger have a nice arch to the knuckle right here. They're not bent back at all doing anything like that. A lot of beginners run into trouble doing that. They need to have a nice arch so that you're not blocking any of the other strings. And this finger needs to lay a little flatter. You're not going to have a, your finger bent back like that at that knuckle, but it's going to be pretty straight. It's not going to have a big arch to it like that. And that's because you're blocking out the fifth string. So it'll look something like that. And everyone's hands are a little different, so I can't say for sure what your hand will look like, but with mine, my thumb is up and it looks like this. And typically your thumb will be up for open chords, most open chords. Typically they won't be down too far. Um, but again, it just depends on the anatomy of your hand and how big your hands are and what's comfortable to you. Just make sure that your thumb is straight up and down. It's not bent sideways like that or anything. And that your palm isn't up like this. It just looks somewhat like mine does and has a nice bend in the wrist down here. And when you think you have this chord down, you can strum through all the strings. And if you hear anything like, like that, you just need to keep adjusting your fingers until everything rings out clearly, until you can hold it comfortably. And once you have, if you do hear any of this, you can go through and check each note individually and see which one's doing it. So if I was right there, that would be the fourth string I'd need to adjust. You know, you just have to go through, check individually until everything rings out clearly and sounds like this. So that's an open D at 11 slash F sharp chord. If you'd like to get the diagram for this chord, you can click the link on the screen and it'll take you to an e-guide that you can download for free. And in this e-guide, it has this chord, but it also has a whole bunch of other beginner chords that'll be really useful for you to learn. It just gives you a bunch of options for different chords and different versions of chords, and it'll really expand your knowledge and give you tons of options for playing chords and songs. And along with the chords, I give you a bunch of options for chord progressions. So I take the chords that are in the e-guide, put them together into sequences and create chord progressions out of them so that you can actually hear them in a more musical situation and you can learn the chord progressions to see what chords sound good together and also get ideas for different chord progressions that you can create on your own. That way you won't just learn a whole bunch of random chords and then have no idea how to use them. This will show you musical situations that they can be used in and really expand your knowledge and help you as a beginner. So if you'd like to get that e-guide, just click the link on the screen and you can download that for free.